Nice to have you with us today. I'm Gary Knoll. Let's say hello to Dr. Russell Blaylock, board-certified neurosurgeon. Uh, he is uh, a person who is, cares about what's happening. He has written three important books. One is called Excitotoxins, about diseases of the nervous system, health and nutrition, secrets that can save your life, and natural strategies for cancer patients. Nice to have you with us. Well, thank you, Gary. Okay, to the issue of vaccinations. First and foremost, um, I have an article here that you wrote called Vaccines, Depression, and Neurodegenerative uh, Degeneration After Age 50, Another Reason to Avoid Recommended Vaccines. Could you take a step-by-step through our what should be our concerns, but right now the average person is pro-vaccine, and I'd like to have them know about you. Well, I've been doing some extensive uh, examination of of the neurological effect of vaccinations, particularly multiple vaccinations, uh, close uh, sequentially together. And there's just a compelling amount of of neuroscience, um, scientific research, indicating that that's a very dangerous policy. And uh, it's particularly dangerous in two age groups, that is the very young uh, the newborn, the small child, and it's very dangerous in people after age 50. Uh, and that's for several reasons. Number one, we know that as you age, uh, your immune system begins to overactivate. Uh, when we look at uh, the uh, inflammatory cytokines, the chemicals that are secreted by the immune system to produce inflammation, they begin to rise after age 50. And by age uh, 75, 80, they really uh, peak at very high levels. And it's uh, thought that this is why there's such high incidence of cancer and uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, uh, joint problems, uh, allergic problems, autoimmune disorders, uh, as well as neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease in the older age group. There's a strong correlation there. And it's not just a correlation, but when we look at the uh, uh, scientific explanation we see that this chronic inflammation produces an activation of the brain's uh, special immune system. It has its own separate immune system that communicates with the body's immune system. And so when the body's immune system is overactiving, it activates uh, this brain uh, immune system that's regulated by microglia cells. Uh, these cells normally are, are resting. Uh, they just supply some uh, support and control of, uh, of the growth and regulation of the brain cells. But once they become activated, then they're acting like immune cells uh, other places, and they can be destructive. Uh, they secrete not only inflammatory cytokines, but also some powerful excitotoxins, glutamate and quinolinic acid. And so when we measure these destructive uh, elements, inflammatory elements in older people, we see they begin to rise. But for most older people, it's not really that uh, destructive of the brain. But if you stimulate their immune system, uh, for instance, by vaccination, they have an overreaction. Yeah, like a flu flu vaccine. Uh, They have an intense overreaction to their immune system that lasts much longer than a younger person. So that they have considerable uh, damage to uh, neural connections to call the synapses. Uh, and this results in an increase uh, in many disorders. And the thing I wrote about in the article that was of particular concern uh, was the fact that it increases depression. And there's a very strong correlation and scientific explanation as to why it produces depression. And that's because when it activates these microglia cells, they secrete uh, glutamate in very high concentrations. And their new research shows that depression, major depression, is strongly correlated to brain levels of glutamate, that the higher the glutamate, the worse the depression, and that very resistant cases of depression that resist all the uh, antipsychotic medications have the highest glutamate levels and the highest uh, inflammatory cytokine levels. So we see there's this intimate uh, relationship between this immune activation and the secretion of glutamate in the brain and depression and anxiety. Well, there's some 14 million people in the United States suffering from serious depressive disorders, and 6 million of those are elderly. And what they've noticed is that the number of elderly people suffering from major depression is growing and that their depression is more resistant 
and prolong uh, and resist treatment. Uh, now, the, the surprise uh, that they found once they discovered this connection between brain inflammation and glutamate levels was that many of the antipsychotic medications actually work by reducing inflammation and by lowering glutamate levels. Uh, and they accidentally discovered that a very powerful glutamate uh, inhibitor called ketamine uh, can produce prolonged uh, relief from major depression. Uh, and so uh, that uh, gave them the idea that, well, this glutamate is the major player uh, in depression. And they also knew that people who have prolonged depression begin to lose their memory, and that if you scan them, to use a MRI scanner, uh, you find that over time they begin to develop atrophy of the hippocampus of the brain, which is the main uh, memory uh, system, and that this... Uh, is reversible if you block glutamate uh, and treat the uh, the depression with the glutamate blockers or reduce the inflammation. And so that what's happening is the glutamate is producing chronic neurodegeneration, that is degeneration of the connections between the cells as well as destroying the brain cells themselves over time. Uh, so this gives us uh, some very strong uh, uh, evidence that indeed this process is a major process in both of these disorders. Well, the other thing we're seeing is a tremendous increase in anxiety where people are highly irritable uh, and uh, panic attacks are growing uh, r rather significantly in this country. And there's a direct correlation between brain glutamate levels, brain inflammation, uh, and anxiety. And that if you block either the inflammation or the glutamate, uh, the anxiety tends to get uh, much better. Well, uh, glutamate is called an excitatory neurotransmitter for that reason. It excites uh, brain cells. Uh, it is playing a major role in seizures. We know that if you block glutamate, uh, that's one way to control seizures, and most of your newer anti-seizure medications, in fact, uh, happen to be uh, uh, anti-glutamate receptor uh, drugs. Uh, a number of natural uh, compounds also reduce uh, glutamate uh, toxicity in the brain. And so your diet uh, plays a, a very large role here. Well, this is what's happening to the elderly is because of this abnormality of their immune system where they're developing chronic inflammation in their body and their brain, uh, they begin to become highly susceptible to a lot of diseases, including flu. Well, the answer is not giving flu vaccines. That just worsens the problem. The answer is to correct the nutritional deficit. Okay, hold your thoughts right there. We're going to return in just uh, 20 seconds. For those of you who are watching, uh, or not watching, but listening, you can go to GaryNull.com, G-A-R-Y-N-U-L-L.com, and watch this. We're filming now that I'm back in our headquarters in New York City and to our studio. You can watch this. We'll be continuing in just a second. Nice to have you with us. In 154 countries all over the world, people are tuning in and now watching as well as listening. And uh, you can do either. You can go to prncomm.net or garynall.com. My guest right now is Dr. Russell Blaylock. Dr. Blaylock, B-L-A-Y-L-O-C-K, is a certified board a neurosurgeon, author, researcher, and uh, he has written for the Journal of American Nutraceutical Association and the Journal of American Physicians and Surgeons, where he's a member. And he's the author of Excitotoxins and uh, also Health and Nutrition Secrets and That Can Save Your Life and Natural Strategies for Cancer Patients. Now, how would a person necessarily know that their anxiety or depression or uh, mental fatigue could be due to a vaccination, and now they're recommending upwards of eight different vaccines for adults. This has never happened before. N every time you turn around, there's another ad for another adult vaccine, even though they're continuing to add to the number of, that children get. Now they're even suggesting that young uh, boys get the papillomavirus uh, Gardasil to prevent them from transmitting the virus um, to women and there's no proof that that would work, but it's another market. There just doesn't seem to be any good science 
showing the safety and efficacy for vaccinations. I just did a documentary on this topic. Uh, by the way, we didn't send you a copy yet, did we? I don't think so. All right, we'll get one out today. It's called Vaccine Nation. And um, I'm very concerned about this. So first explain how your average physician treating someone for anxiety just may give them a, you know, antipsychotic or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor without knowing what you're telling us. Well, you know, this is very common. Is they don't understand this this new research indicating this strong connection, and so they use the older medications. Now, one of the reasons serotonin is connected to depression is because when you become inflamed, uh, for instance, you have the flu or or you've been vaccinated, that causes a, a powerful suppression of serotonin in the brain through uh, various mechanisms, uh, and so you become deficient. We also know that excess glutamate inhibits. Uh, brain serotonin levels. So you've got two things causing it. Well, rather than correct the cause, they're uh, trying to use a drug to increase serotonin levels. Well, that increases toxicity in the brain when you do because that serotonin, because of the inflammation, is shunted away from making uh, serotonin into making quinolinic acid, which is an excitotoxin. Uh, So actually you're, you're making things worse, and this probably explains uh, these school shootings that are connected to the SSRI medications because of the, the high glutamate uh, quinolinic acid production in these uh, these kids' brains. Uh, so when, when you go to the doctor, say you have major depression, thing you do is get a C-reactive protein, a highly sensitive C-reactive protein, or you can get tumor necrosis factor alpha and leukin-1 beta levels done. Uh, there are sophisticated laboratories that can do that to measure the inflammatory cytokines directly. Uh, dietary, there's many things you can do to, to regulate that. But it's interesting that that uh, one of the other connections to this depression is we know that people who have coronary heart disease have major depression three times higher uh, incidence than the general public, and that it precedes the onset of the heart disease. Uh, that is, the elevated inflammation, the elevated inflammatory cytokines uh, predict the future risk of having a, a heart attack. Uh, when they looked at elderly in terms of depression, they found the same thing, that if you measured inflammatory cytokines, it would predict who was going to have the major depression later in life. So, uh, you know, th- there's very, very strong evidence here. Uh, and people are getting, if you follow all the schedules from childhood to, to the end of your life, uh, it's estimated you receive anywhere from 100 to 150 vaccines, uh, and they're spaced close enough together to produce uh, significant brain destruction. And I predict uh, that we're going to see an even greater increase in neurodegenerative diseases in this country, as well as depression, suicide, uh, homicide, uh, due to this uh, insane vaccine uh, policy. Uh, the last question I have is what would this do to to the developing brain of a child. If, you, if it, this can happen to adults over 50 and a child is going to get uh, 36 different vaccines before the age of six, many at one day of age, hepatitis B, um, why wouldn't it also cause some problems and has it caused problems in some children? Well, there's compelling evidence that that indeed is true and I'm writing a part two to the article I put uh, about the depression, which is going to cover the childhood vaccines. But because the child's brain does most of its formation during the first two years of life, uh, there's particular danger, and that child is getting 23 different vaccines during that two-year period. Uh, And as you say, by age uh, six, they're getting 36 different vaccines, and they're very close together. And many of these children go to their pediatrician, get five, six, as many as nine vaccines at, at one office visit. Now, when we do this experimentally in uh, animals uh, of every species, we find that's very destructive to the developing brain. It it causes the brain to develop abnormally. It affects the portions of the brain that are also affected in autism. And when we look at, uh, you know, there's a very good study in the Annals of Neurology, uh, which looked at the brain of autistics from age 5 to 44, and found that they had chronic microglial activation for decades in their brain. Uh, So the idea that you would uh, even uh, 
suggest that there's no connection between vaccines and autism does not comport with what we're seeing in the neuroscience literature. That, in fact, the neuroscience literature says there is a very strong uh, indication the vaccines are producing this chronic uh, ongoing inflammation in the brain and degeneration of the the brain's connections. Hmm. Dr. Blaylike, we're out of time for this segment of our program. We would like to invite you back just to discuss autism and vaccines, if you'd be available. Certainly, that'd be fine. Okay, and do you have a website? I agree with your, I want to say I agree with your your editorial before I go down. Uh, Yeah, my website is www.russellblaylockmd.com. That's R-U-S-S-E-L-L-B-L-A-Y-L-O-C-K-M-D.com. All the best to you. We look forward to our discussion again. Thank you. I appreciate it.